नमस्कार अ वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज प्रशांत कुमार सिन्हा ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेज ऑफ मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब द हेडलाइंस यूएस एंड तालिबान मीट टू डिस्कस पीस एंड परमानेंट सीज फायर डोनाल्ड ट्रंप परसिस विद एलिगेशन ऑफ रेग द यूएस प्रेसिडेंशियल इलेक्शन बांग्लादेश साइंस इट्स फर्स्ट प्रेफरेंशियल ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट मार्किंग फिफ्टी ईयर्स ऑफ डिप्लोमेटिक रिलेशन विद भूटान Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft safely returns samples from asteroid Ryukyu. Pfizer seeks emergency authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in India and in cricket India wins the second T20 international against Australia to gain an unassailable lead in the series. The US special representative for Afghanistan Mr Salmeh Khalizad has expressed pleasure at the ongoing peace talks between the US and the Taliban on Sunday in a tweet Mr Khalizad said that the Afghanistan High Council for National Reconciliation HCNR became operational today with its first leadership committee meeting he added that the gathering of political leaders across the political spectrum is an important step the US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in a statement welcomed the formation and first leadership committee meeting of the Afghanistan High Council for National Reconciliation on Saturday it added that as an authoritative body on peace the high council and its leadership committee will provide counsel and guidance to the islamic republic negotiating team with the taliban on the terms of an agreement on a political road map power sharing and a permanent ceasefire to end the country's long war In another development outgoing US president Donald Trump remained incredulous to his election loss as he told the crowd at a rally on Saturday that last month's vote was rigged this despite repeated statements from the federal election authorities that the elections were the most secure in America's history Trump told the hordes in Valdosta Georgia they cheated and rigged a presidential election but we'll still win it and they are going to try to rig this election too ahead of a senate runoff Bangladesh signed its first preferential trade agreement PTA with Bhutan allowing duty free access to a range of goods between the two countries this is the first PTA Bangladesh has signed with any country in the world marking 50 years of diplomatic ties between the Bangladesh and Bhutan governments the agreement was signed on Sunday in Dhaka Under the PTA 100 Bangladeshi products will get duty free access to Bhutan at the same time 34 items from Bhutan will get duty free access into Bangladesh further items can be added to the list later on the basis of discussion between the two countries Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft safely returned samples collected from asteroid Ryugu about 300 million kilometers from Earth on Sunday. The Australian Space Agency on the early hours of Sunday tweeted that the samples were on their way for analysis at the Woomera test range. The samples contain material from both the subsurface and the surface of the asteroid and can give vital insight into the evolution of the solar system. Hayabusa had left asteroid Ryugu and was earthbound since November 2019. The mission followed the first Hayabusa mission which had returned samples from the asteroid Itokawa in 2010. New Zealand joins Japan and 31 other nations in declaring a climate emergency. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern piloted a motion to be passed in the New Zealand Parliament to commit the island nation to a carbon neutral government by 2025. In an impassioned speech, Ms. Ardern said the country must act with urgency on climate change and described it as one of the greatest challenges of our time. We must act with urgency, Mr. Speaker, to ensure global emissions fall to net zero by 2050. Oh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, this declaration is an acknowledgement of the next generation, yeah, yeah. an acknowledgement of the burden that they will carry if we do not get this right and if we do not take action now. Iran is set to increase the production and sale of oil at full capacity within 3 months. Iran's state media on Sunday reported that the Iran that Iran has instructed its oil ministry to prepare to scale up its production and sale of crude oil to full ahead of a possible easing of US sanctions after president elect Joe Biden takes office.
This is All India Radio giving you the world news. India pays homage to Bharat Ratna Dr. B. R. Ambedkar on his 64th Mahaparinirvana Divas or death anniversary today. President Ram Nath Kovind has paid rich tributes to Dr. Ambedkar, describing him as a great architect of our constitution who strived for a society and governance based on the tenets of equality and justice. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid tributes to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar on his Mahaparinirvana Divas. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, Baba Sahib's thoughts and ideals continue to give strength to millions. The Prime Minister said, we are committed to fulfilling the dreams he had for the nation. AIR commemorates this solemn occasion with a big net from Dr. Ambedkar's address at the 4th World Fellowships of Buddhists, wherein he compared and contrasted the Buddhist and communist philosophies in his characteristic eloquence. 2,400 years ago, said exactly the same thing. He said, there is Dukkha in the world. He did not use the word exploitation, but he did lay the foundation of his religion on what he called there is Dukkha in the world. The word Dukkha, no doubt, has been interpreted in various ways. It has been interpreted to mean rebirth, the round of life, that is Dukkha. I do not agree with that. I think there are a lot of places in the Buddhist literature where the Buddha has used the word Dukkha in the sense of poverty. Therefore, so far, as the foundation is concerned, there is really no difference at all. India's Foreign Secretary Mr. Harshwardhan Shringla said that artists dedicated to Indian art forms are not merely performers but brand ambassadors who have been taking India's rich cultural heritage to the global audience. Speaking at the Global Heritage Series organized by Speak McKay, he commended the role played by the organization in nurturing and promoting Indian heritage. He also referred to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's remark at the Speak McKay's International Convention earlier this year that the fusion of ancient art and music with technology is a demand of the times. Now, coronavirus updates from around the world. The WHO has confirmed that the number of COVID-19 infections has crossed 65.65 million worldwide. The southern German region of Bavaria announced on Sunday that it will impose a tougher lockdown from Wednesday till the 5th of January. Pfizer has sought emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in India. The firm in its application submitted to the drug regulator has sought permission to import the vaccine for sale and distribution in the country. Pfizer India has become the first pharmaceutical firm to seek from the Drugs Controller General of India, DGCI, DCGI, an emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in the country after its parent company secured such clearance in the UK and Bahrain. On to sports now. In cricket, India defeated Australia by six wickets in the second T20 at the Sydney Cricket Ground today. With this win, India also won the three-match series, having won the first match on Friday. Hardik Pandya's blistering 42 runs of 22 balls earned him the Man of the Match title. In football, Manchester United beat West Ham United 3-1 at London Stadium on Saturday as fans returned to the Premier League for the first time since March. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let's listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnavachan, by artists from Armenia. And with that, we end this bulletin. See you at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.